discuss this with our guests. Let me introduce them from the Syrian Social Club. We have Omar Waqaf, who joins us from London. From the Executive Intelligence Review, Bill Jones joins us from Washington and Director of the Center for Research on Globalization. Professor Michelle Chesodovsky joins us from Montreal. Gentlemen, welcome. Professor Chesodovsky, I'm going to start first with you. Uh, in her press conference on Monday, the U.S. State Department spokeswoman Victoria Nuland predicted that there would be at least three more new massacres in Syria, like the one in Hula. Uh, she knew the specific locations of these would-be massacres at the same time. There was uh, the Israeli Deputy Minister, Ayub Kara, who said Syria might use its chemical weapons against Israeli forces. What do you make of these comments? Well, I'm not surprised because um, the evidence increasingly points to the involvement of U.S. intelligence and the U.S. military in supporting directly the death squads, uh, namely uh, the atrocities which were committed in Hula were committed, and this is confirmed by many independent reports, were committed by the Free Syrian Army, the self-proclaimed Free Syrian Army, which is supported by the United States and the Western Military Alliance. So that she, sh if she made that statement, well, perhaps she had some advanced indication of the covert operations in support of these death squads. We're dealing with a, with a diabolical agenda whereby the United States supporting terrorist entities which have been active in Syria right from day one in Dara in, in, in March of last year. They support these terrorist entities which are involved in acts of killing civilians and then they blame the killings on the enemy, namely on the Syrian government. I should mention, and it's very important, that this um, notion of a massive casualty producing event used for propaganda purposes, namely killing civilians, is something which is entrenched in U.S. military doctrine since the 1960s. It was part of a secret operation, Operation Northwoods, which in principle was directed against Cuba, and that operation is, is clear, crystal clear, because it, it, it has been declassified. And what it consisted in, and I quote from the document, plans to kill innocent people and commit acts of terrorism in the United States with a view to creating a useful wave of indignation in U.S. newspapers and then blaming it on Fidel Castro. Okay? So that that was a 1962 op. Uh, President Kennedy refused to implement it. But it is something which they have been doing, killing people and then blaming it on the enemy and then using the killing uh, to justify a military agenda, namely, in this case, aggression against a sovereign country. Uh, uh, let's look at, uh, Amar Wagaf, what uh, the report uh, was focused on, and that was uh, in terms of the decision uh, by the Arab League uh, to have uh, Syrian TV stop its broadcast on uh, these two uh, satellite cha uh, channels, Nalsat and Arabsat. Uh, in which it said that it was uh, perhaps an indication that uh, the Arab League was influenced uh, by uh, some Western countries. Why do you think a decision like that was made? Well, if you go, you know, very far away in fabricating uh, things that are happening on the ground, it's not only enough for the Syrian people to know exactly what is happening, but when Syrian television and Syrian satellite channels uh, uh, you know, show that uh, certain reality is on the ground, then the surrounding environment, the Arab world or the Western environment, should not really know what is really happening. So, for example, Syrian television has been for the past few weeks um, showing certain videos, unedited videos, that were captured uh, after an operation of the Syrian army in Baba Amr in Homs. And those edited videos reveal that the culprits of the videos we had seen before on uh, YouTube claiming that the Syrian army is doing this atrocity or committing that atrocity. When you see the ed unedited video, which is like 10 times longer, you see that the armed groups are the ones who are actually doing this and they are 
you know, quite happy about doing it. Uh, they shout Allahu Akbar and then they laugh. But when you have the video on YouTube, uh, you know, the laughing is cut, for example. Um, the Arab world should not really see these things because they should not question the, the, uh, the story that has been presented to them from the very beginning by the likes of Al Jazeera and Al Arabiya. That's why they, uh, they wanted to shut down the, the Syrian satellite uh, TV channels. And again, there are now uh, indications that um, a new chapter of the propaganda is going to take place, which is you know, about inciting a full-scale civil war in Syria. Now, if Syrian television comes out and says, well, this is exactly what happened in Hula, this is exactly what happened um, in, uh, in, in this area where uh, an alleged massacre was committed by the Syrian army, then the people outside Syria won't believe everything that um, is being said, and especially the people in Syria, because a lot of Syrians watch Syrian satellite channel in their houses, and if that is uh, cut, then probably they won't be able to see much of this truth coming out. It's pretty much a similar situation to what happened with Press TV itself here in London. Suddenly it was cut off the air for whatever reason. You know, people, uh, the target audience should not see what these channels uh, are going to say. Bill Jones, uh, NATO Secretary General Andres von Rasmussen made an interesting uh, comparison between the unrest in Syria and was to the wars in the Balkans back in the 1990s. What do you read between the lines from his comments there? Well, I think it's clear that there are certain elements who really want military intervention in Syria. Uh, this is coming out of uh, the British circles, the British French circles, the same ones who were pushing uh, the uh, Libya operation. Uh, want to destabilize Syria for a variety of reasons, uh, to uh, undercut uh, the relationship of Syria with Iran, but also to destabilize and to weaken uh, Russia and China, which of course Russia in particular has probably been the, uh, the prime, uh, uh, prime uh, force that has prevented a war in Syria. And Obama is really doing, there's a big fight within Washington on this issue. Uh, Susan Rice out of the uh, uh, embassy in uh, the UN and uh, people around uh, Obama in the, in the uh, White House, Tom Donilon and others are really pushing for a military option but there's still opposition to that being placed up by the US military by General Dempsey who most recently gave a press conference last week saying he did not want a military intervention in Syria he wanted a diplomatic solution but there is a tremendous push now to move in that direction to destabilize the Middle East and really to upset the positions taken by China and Russia which is kind of the the, the bigger picture uh, going on here Professor Chesarovsky when uh, our guest there talks about uh, how Russia and China is the bigger picture let's reflect on your statements here you said the US military and the U.S. intelligence are supporting the death squads. Now, uh, there's a big difference between the U.S. military and the U.S. intelligence in terms of their support. Elaborate on that more for us and ultimately clarify for us, is the U.S. arming the opposition or the armed groups inside Syria? Of which then, if that's the case, we're looking at the, these countries, including the U.S., which uh, in essence then are fighting Assad and uh, his security apparatus who's being armed by Russia, of which the Apache helicopters Russia denied. Well, let, let me clarify a little bit the, the issue of the relationship between the Pentagon and the CIA. Uh, as you may notice, the, the, the CIA director is appointed to the, uh, uh, to the Pentagon, and then you have a senior, I'm thinking of General Porteous, uh, uh, who is then appointed to the to the CIA. There's a, there's, there's a lot of competition between the two, but there's a lot of collaboration, and ultimately they, they, see, they, they consult and they see to eye, eye to eye, and then they coordinate with the State Department. Now, on the second part of your question, um, the, 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 the action, covert action within Syrian territory has been there right from the beginning. The United States and NATO are supporting the terrorists. And this was actually even revealed uh, in the Israeli media uh, right at the beginning. 
um, there was a report to the effect that actually NATO was, was recruiting uh, the Mujahideen, uh, in other words, um, fundamentalist fighters, uh, to integrate uh, their foot soldiers in, in Syria. Uh, we know that um, there are special forces on the ground from NATO countries. Uh, recently we had a situation where French uh, parachutists, uh, French special forces, were repatriated to France, an agreement between Damascus and Paris just before the French elections. There's British MI6 on the ground. In other words, the war has already started. This is a war of aggression. It is not necessarily using the instruments of conventional theater wars, which is to come in with artillery and air force and so on, but uh, allied special forces on the ground they are training the rebels. They are also training the rebels in the art of committing atrocities. And what is very important is that the death squads which were created in Iraq in 2005 under the, the helm of John Negroponte, who was ambassador at the time, and this was based on the Salvador option, in other words, creating death squadrons, and then these death squads go in and kill people, which then creates the situation of sectarian warfare. Well, the current or the outgoing, if you wish, ambassador to Damascus, U.S. ambassador to, to Syria, John Steve, uh, sorry, Robert Stephen Ford, was part of the Negroponte team in, uh, in Baghdad in 2005. And what is involved is the formation of killers, of actual killers which go in, kill people, and, and they're killing people also in the Christian community, which is confirmed by Vatican sources. And uh, then they use this to create sectarian violence and to lead to the demise of the government. That is what is happening. So the war has started. This is not a civil war. This is a war of aggression against the sovereign state. And, and to, again, to get this clear, uh, it seems like a perfect scenario for uh, these countries like the United States and uh, the Arab countries, Qatar and Saudi Arabia, to name a few here, uh, since they are the ones arming the opposition, whether it's through weapons or through intelligence, then on the other side you have Russia uh, uh, that has uh, given military support for the Assad security apparatus. So in essence, uh, there are no uh, uh, soldiers uh, of, uh, that are on the ground from the United States or from these Arab countries. Am I correct to conclude that, fighting against each other? Uh, I, 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 I'm, there have been no confirmation of U.S. soldiers on the ground, but there have been confirmation of, uh, of uh, British, French, Qatari um, special forces on the ground. And there are indications that the United States is actually involved in the training of, of, um, of uh, terrorists out of uh, military facilities in Qatar. Okay, let's, uh, let's move on to uh, another question here, Amar Wagaf. This is uh, a fog, false flag operation in which the Syrian armed groups try to set up British journalists working for Channel 4 reporter Alex Thompson and to get him killed in anti-President Assad propaganda. Uh, you might be aware of this. Thompson said that his deaths at the hands of uh, President Bashar al-Assad's forces would have drawn sympathy to the rebel cause. Dead journalists are bad for Damascus, he said. Wasn't this the same scenario that happened in Hula? Well, what we know what, of what happened in Hula right now is that officially the two families that, that were slain in Al Hula were actually pro government. One of them is uh, related to the newly elected MP of the region, uh, Mr. Abdul Mati al the two families of uh, Al Sayyid and Ab Abdul Razak. What the German newspaper, the, the, the Frankfurter uh, uh, Allgemeine Zeitung claimed, and this is yet to be confirmed, is that the two families were actually Shiite and Alawite families, and the only Sunni family is, is the tiny one that is related to this newly MP. And if this is true, then this blows the whole, the whole theory upon which the, the Syrian diplomats were expelled from, uh, from Europe, from Canada, from Australia, um, because uh, it is very clear that the Syrian army, A, did not commit this uh, uh, atrocity by shelling, because we never saw any um, uh, body being, 
you know, uh, dragged from under the rubble, all the bodies that we saw, especially of those, uh, of the children, uh, were actually killed in cold blood from, uh, as a result of wounds that were sustained from very close range. And the second, if this is really confirmed that these, uh, that these families were not Sunni uh, uh, Syrians, then, then it's, it's very probably clear who actually committed this. Now, I mean, anybody can ask the question, why would the Shabiha, as it was uh, then uh, claimed, you know, uh, take on uh, an entire village and only choose a few houses in which very related families live? If they were there to kill based on sectarian basis, they would actually kill everybody they see uh, in, in front of them. Why choose a certain family? It's only when we realize that those families were pro-government, then we know what really happened. And it was indeed the armed groups who committed this. Now, it was, there is this game that is going on all the time, which you refer to with regards to the Channel 4 correspondent, which, was, which is, you know, we, we do something, and immediately blame the Syrian government, the, uh, uh, the, the, the supporting governments of the West, the United States, uh, and, and Europe and so on, take certain steps, you know, let's uh, let the uh, Security Council convene, let us, uh, you know, increase the sanctions and so on and so forth. And later on, when the dust, dust settles and the reality is clear, nobody gives a damn anymore. So, so this has been a trend since the very beginning, really. It's not new at all. Bill Jones, that's a very dangerous trend, isn't it? Uh, when the dust settles and the reality comes out, it's no longer important. But let's, I mean, the, the audience around the world who's following this, obviously it seems that they have to read between the lines. I mean, as an example, this is a reputable news uh, 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 wire agency. This is how they've reported one uh, example. They cited accounts of security forces using precise shelling to hit opposition strongholds in residential areas. I repeat, residential areas where they were hiding. Now, doesn't that translate into the opposition using these people as human shields? Well, we have a lot of examples uh, of this uh, type of thing, including, as uh, Foreign Minister Lavrov said in his recent uh, press conference, of how many of these people uh, took the journalist or pointed the journalist in a certain direction, knowing that they were going to get attacked, hoping that they could have the bodies of dead journalists that they could show the world and saying, you know, this is the result of the Syrian military. I mean, this is what you've had going on, this kind of uh, counterinsurgency uh, operations by, on the part uh, of the Syrian Liberation Army and the other forces, diverse forces, which are operating within Syria in order to create the kind of Goebbels propaganda which is needed in order to uh, appease world opinion in order to create some kind of a military action against Syria. It all began with Libya. There was an attempt to make a domino effect of this sort of thing, to go from Libya, to go to Syria, uh, in the light of, of what is the biggest financial crisis in the world. A lot of things are very, very unstable, and they wanted to create a situation in which there was greater control. And I think in the backs of people's minds, uh, this uh, destabilization is not simply aimed at, uh, at President Assad or even at Iran, but it's really to undermine the role that China and Russia have been playing uh, as major powers in trying to maintain stability in the world. And if Syria is gone, then of course Russia loses a major ally. And of course they also, since they've taken the point in trying to defend the sovereignty of Syria, they also uh, are significantly weakened by the fact that their policies have been defeated. So there, there is a greater game being played here, and the fact that it hasn't occurred yet is due to the resistance that has been put up by President Putin and his people in Russia, but also by a certain reticence here in the United States where there's kind of a, uh, a fight behind the scenes in uh, preventing any kind of U.S. military action in Syria. The U.S. military is very much uh, overstressed at this point. They want to move more into Asia. A new war in the Middle East would change that entirely. And that's why there's a lot of resistance to this coming from the uniformed military. But on the civilian side, this is being pushed by Rice, by people in the White House, Tom Donilon, and by uh, the Obama people.
Okay, well, finally, let me go to you, uh, Professor Chesodovsky. Tell us where the situation is headed, given all the different dynamics, given all the different statements coming out, like the UN saying it's a civil war, the opposition coming out saying it's not a civil war, et cetera, et cetera. Where is this heading to? Quickly, if you can. Well, I, I, I think uh, if we want to look at the broader picture, we have to uh, address the fact that a war on Syria, which in, in some respects has already commenced, how it will un unwind is, a, is, a, is, a, is another matter, uh, is part of a, of a global uh, agenda. Uh, it, uh, it, it does, in a very uh, direct way, uh, affect the relationship between the United States and its allies and the two competing world powers, namely China and Russia. It is not coincidental that uh, the United States is threatening China uh, in the South China Sea, in the Korean Peninsula, and is also threatening Russia uh, in, uh, in its, on its European borders. Uh, these threats are there to, uh, in a sense, to uh, convince the Russians and the Chinese that they should toe the line. It's, it's a blackmailing process. Um, but I should emphasize that if any kind of broader military action uh, were to take place against Syria, this could lead to escalation uh, and become a regional war which would extend from the eastern Mediterranean right through to, the, to Central Asia and the western frontier with Okay, thank you. We're going to leave it there. Let me thank our guest, Syrian Social Club, Amar Awakaf there from London, from the Executive Intelligence Review, Bill Jones. Thank you so much. And Director of the Center for Research on Globalization, Professor Michelle Chosodovsky from Montreal. Thank you for watching another edition. Any questions or comments, newsroom at